all right what's up youtube welcome back to the channel so as i promised i will be making more videos and a lot of people are looking forward to this video specifically it is how i converted my jd square tube inventor to electric over hydraulic without spending two thousand dollars so we'll go ahead and dive right in and get started on that If you're new to bending tube, you may want to jump back and watch my other video I did on this bender. Before I converted it, I kind of went into a little bit more detail on how it works and, and all that good stuff. Um, this video is specifically about people who are already using the bender, they know how it works, and they want to convert it to electric to be faster, quieter, more efficient, all that good stuff. So long story short, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Um, the kit from JD Squared is like, the pump alone is like $1,300. Um, and I was actually going to buy it and luckily with the COVID their dealer thing, they couldn't get any more pumps and they didn't know if they would ever get any more pumps. Uh, they did. In my opinion, it's, it's a better setup than theirs. But one of the biggest problems I had was I didn't, I'm not a hydraulic expert. I didn't really understand fully how the system worked, which made it hard to piece together my own kit, which is a lot of people have done it, but not a lot of people have documented it. And I put on Facebook groups and, you know, all this stuff, trying to find information. And it just, there wasn't a lot of good. It was like, yeah, I did this. And, and a lot of this setups kind of look janky and I just couldn't find what I needed. So I dug in, I called around to some people I used to work with that knew hydraulics. Um, and I kind of figured out how I needed to do it, what I needed to do and I just started buying parts. So what I'm gonna do is go over how the system works. And I think that right there will help most people understand what's happening and what they need. And they can tweak the design a little bit to their own needs. Um, and I'll go over why you'd wanna do that in a little bit. Because for me, that was kind of the biggest thing. I didn't, it was all so overwhelming. And really it's actually super simple. Um, now that I know. So anyway, I'm gonna just flip over and check out the bender and show you everything, how I mounted it up, how it's plumbed up, how it works, and why I did some of the things I did, why you might want to do things differently, all that good stuff. So here's the bender. This is the Jetty Squared Model 3. Stand I already had built, I kinda of just modified it to hold the pump. Um, my cylinder mount, the valve, the pump's down there. Um, so we're just going to start with the pump and work our way up and I'm going to kind of just describe how everything works. So the car battery thing was kind of one of those things that I was on the fence about and a lot of people are also, that's kind of a turn off. They're like, Hey, I want to plug this thing into a wall. I don't want to have to deal with the car battery. And that was kind of my thoughts in the beginning and up until I did it. Um, now I kind of have other opinions. I actually like the battery. It's, it's completely mobile if you want it to be. Um, but the reason I chose car battery, uh, it's pretty simple. Any cheap Chinese brand hydraulic pump that was 110 volts had horrible reviews and it cost you twice as much. You can get these pumps and then relatively it's Chinese stuff. So, you know, you're going to have hit and miss things. Um, uh, most of the bad reviews were because they don't know how to list the port size. And I ran into that also. Um, but it was like 200 bucks, $220 or something. Um, you can use a two post lift hydraulic pump, but they're a single action pump. So you have to port the tank and where I bend my tube, there's only one 220 volt outlet and my welders plugged into that. And I didn't want to have to site, you know, plug, unplug and plug and deal with that. So I went with the car battery, I already had a battery. Um, now that I have it, I'm glad the thing never drops. I keep a battery charger on it and never really gets out of the dream. Um, if you do in production work and you bend like 85, 90 degrees back to back to back, it may drain the battery. Um, for what I do, um, I am using it daily, weekly, six, seven days a week, but I'm not bending tube in a really high capacity, like production work. So I'm not real sure, um, how it would work then. You may want to look into using like a plug in outlet then. So anyway, I will describe how the system works the best I can. Like I said, I'm not a hydraulic expert. So 
This is a double action pump. What that basically means, a hydraulic system, you're gonna have an outlet and a return. What that means is basically, you have these two solenoid valves and either side can act as the outlet and the return. So the way I have it plumbed up or working, technically you only need a single action. But this pump had the best reviews um, and you can use it just like it is. And I figured if one of these valves ever goes out, I can just use the other one. So this valve is not necessary and I'll kind of go into a little detail of why I did the valve um, here after I show you how it works. But basically, um, if you can see the hoses, obviously from the pump to the valve, where one of these is in and return. So basically when the hyd when the pump is on and it's just like an idle, we're flowing straight through this valve through these two lines. When we open the valve in either direction, it's going to push fluid through one of these hoses and they go to each side of the cylinder, therefore opening and closing the valve. Now this pump comes with a push button. This is what it looks like up and down. It's actually intended to go on a dump truck. And that button would actually work straight out the box. You can hook lines from the pump straight to the cylinder and it'll work just fine. All right, so the, re so the reason I chose to do this over this is when you have the buttons, what's happening is as soon as you push it, the pump kicks on and it's 100% full flow to the cylinder immediately. Um, it will work that way if you're creeping up on a band, you know, and you don't want to overshoot it. You just kind of have to bump the button and just bump the cylinder over um, because it, it is full. It's pretty fast when you have full flow. So how the valve works, this is like a log splitter, uh, common terms, a log splitter valve. What's happening with this valve, like I said earlier, we're just cycling through you know in and out of these two lines here when you either direction you're going to put push fluid with this all the way open you're basically manually pulling the you're controlling in the open so if you crack it you're actually only cracking it which means you're only getting part of the flow through the cylinder which means it's not going to move as fast so i did a little like time playing around with like in a 10 degree increment full flow uh 10 degrees it took three seconds so I tried to crack it the least amount as possible and it took 13 seconds to do 10 degrees. So that kind of shows you how much control you really have. So to me, that's, that's super convenient. Um, I don't, I can't say, you know, I didn't actually try this, um, but pr more than likely you're going to do a 45. You're just going to go all the way up to like 40, 39, and then just start bumping the cylinder to get it where you want. Um, with this, I just pin it wide open until I get real close and then I kind of just back out of the valve and it'll start creeping and I can go straight to 45 like I want to. Um, to me, this is 100% worth. Um, it's like a $50 valve and you have to use two extra set of hoses. The control you get with that is well worth it to me. It may not be for other people. Um, like I said, it'll work straight out of the box with this um, and you only need two hoses and it's you know it's a little cheaper so that's two different alternatives you can do i recommend the valve um, any day of the week so here's the cylinder mount this is a model 3 bender i 100 percent know this will not work with a 32 because they're totally different um i do think it would work with the pro tools 105 i think they're just like a carbon copy of the model 3 uh, I do, I am going to be selling these on the website if you want them. As of right now, I only have one and it works with an 18 inch stroke. Um, I'm, if there's enough interest, I may look into running ones that'll run a 20, a 22, a 24 inch stroke. Um, and that's another thing I'll talk about. So for me, floor space was more important than doing a 90 degree in one sweep. Um, you know, the longer you get the cylinder, the more you can see how far it hangs out. Um, I never really do a lot of nineties. So to me, it wasn't, I just matched the Harbor Freight Ram 18 inch stroke, um, which gets you to 70 degrees. And for me, that was fine. I don't mind repinning. Um, if you have to do, like I said, if you're doing production work and you're having to bend a ton of nineties, it's probably, you may want to jump up to like a 22 inch cylinder. Um, it gets about two and a half, two and a half inches of stroke per 10 degrees with this setup. 
So you can kind of do the math at, at 18 inches max is out around 70. But like I said, I am going to sell these on the website. Um, I haven't got them listed yet. They may be listed by the time I post this video. Um, so another thing that was, and I can't speak on the JD Square kit. I know some of the kits people have made and the design of the cylinder mount they've made. You had to use hydraulic pressure to preload the die. And some people call it zero in the die, calibrating the die. Basically, when I say zero in the die, you're putting your tube in and putting tension all the way onto the tube until it's fully tight but not bending. Then you set your degree finder to zero. A lot of people's systems had to use hydraulic pressure in that. I didn't like that idea. You're just guessing. So I can't do it holding the phone in one handed, but my design, the cylinder mount in my design will let you preload the die by hand. So you don't have any guesswork on what a true zero is. Uh, that's to me, that's, that's pretty important. Um, the only thing I lost from this system is spring back. You can't judge spring back. Um, I was hoping that with this valve that I could just bleed it off and it would go back, but it doesn't. But I've been bending tube long enough that I kind of know the characteristics of each tube. And I even wrote it down here in case I ever forget. Um, but it's kind of just up in my brain right now. If you're just got a bender, I might would recommend bending some tube and kind of, this is pretty standard. Um, 120 wall welded seam tube. You're going to get about three degrees spring back. DOM is five. Uh, 095 is two, and I don't really use that much anymore. But that does change, you know, like I said, I've done enough to know, you know, kind of up to 30 degrees with DOM. It's more like three past 90. It's more like six. Anyway, that stuff you just kind of figure out yourself. That's the only downfall of this setup is you can't judge spring back. Um, so you just kind of have to know. So the last part of the system that I'll go over is the start switch of the pump. With, from the way you get it, it's like I said, it's gonna come with these buttons. You hook your battery to it, and when you push whichever one, um, the pump immediately kicks on and pushes fluid. That is not how I wanted to do it. I wanted it to run, obviously, straight through here, and I'm controlling flow here. So what I did, whichever valve on the pump side that I use, I took that button, uh, I believe it was the down button, doesn't matter. Um, I took the wires running from that switch and actually wired them into a normally closed switch. So if you're not familiar with normally closed, basically how that works is with the switch pulled out is actually when the contacts are closed and you have voltage flowing through. Pushed in, it's going to open. So it's a stop button, essentially. It's an emergency stop button. It's open, you got flow you, or uh, electricity. Close it and then no power. Um, you could do a toggle switch, you could do whatever you want. For me, I just like the fact that I can kind of just bump it when I'm done, it's off. So there's a little, it's just close up of the switch. So I'll go ahead and pull it out and let you see how it kind of works. So pull the switch out, pumps on, move the valve here, out, pull it back, got in. And you can kind of tell how fast that was so that's gonna basically do it for the video like i said it's it's not gonna be a how-to step by step um i think that just by going over an overview and how I did everything is enough for most people to kind of see um everything here is that you can get from amazon is in my amazon store um that's the valve the pump and the emergency stop switch and the battery charger that I ha keep hooked up full time. The cylinder mount, oh, I'm sorry, and the cylinder. The cylinder mount is on my website, or it will be. Um, like I said, it's a Model 3 specific. It may work with the Pro, Tool, Pro Tools 105, but I can't confirm that. And one thing, um, if you watch this whole video, I didn't talk about is hoses and fittings um, and I was going to try to make a fitting list and I just, after the hassle that I went through, I decided it wasn't worth it. I think it will mislead people and create some frustration. Um, I will tell you what I did and kind of, you can go from there. Um, also everyone's hoses are going to be different. I had my hoses made, um, by someone local and it, it was easiest for them to put JIC six 
female and 90 degree females on every end of the hose. And I was fine with that. Keep it simple. That's a really common size around here. And what I did from there is adapt from JIC six to whatever I was going to. So um, the cylinder, the ports on the pump, the ports on the valve were all different. Um, so I just got an adapter fitting to go from say uh, number six, number six O-ring boss to a JIC six. Um, and I believe that was what the cylinder was. And same thing on the pump. I went from there to the JIC six, etc. cetera. Uh, all my hoses are 48 inches long. Obviously, depending on where you mount your valve and your pump, all that could be um, totally different. The main reason I'm not gonna list the fittings is because I had a really bad experience with Amazon and um, everyone I bought parts from. The only company that listed the port size right was the cylinder. The pump was listed wrong, the valve was listed wrong. So when I got it and they're telling me it's a half inch British standard pipe thread, it wasn't or a three eight or whatever um nothing was right so i had bought all these fittings ahead of time to adapt to a jsc six when i got them they didn't match up so then i had to go and match them up and figure out what they were i'm not even gonna fool with that because if they fix the description if they don't if you buy a different valve there's a lot of valves that have the exact same thing with different you know some of them have o-ring boss some of them have british standard pipe thread the one I actually bought was British Standard Pipe Thread, but I went back and changed the Amazon store to the O-Ring Boss because that's a little easier to find. The fittings are a lot cheaper, but it's the same valve. So I filmed the video and I mentioned the hoses and the fittings. Create some confusion, it might be difficult. Um, after I filmed all the parts to the video, my buddy, he actually also converted his and I sent him everything I did. Um, when he got his hoses done, he actually found a mobile um, hose hydraulic company and they come out and matched all the they made his hoses and matched up all the fittings uh, and he was able to buy it right there so i didn't even know that was a thing um and it may not be a thing in your area um that's the first i'd ever heard of it i thought that was pretty cool so i thought it was worth putting in the video um to shop around and, and you maybe you could find something like that once you get all the other parts you can just call the hose guy let them come out there make your hoses up find the right fittings that you need and kind of save you a hassle of having to take it all to a hydraulic shop or research and figure out what port size you actually have on your pump um, because all that did create a little can create a little frustration because most of these chinese companies can't they don't, they listed all the port sizes wrong to start with so then you're trying you're left trying to figure out what you have and then match it and it's just a big mess so i thought that was worth mentioning anyway that's all we'll go back to the video now so that's kind of why i didn't want to put the fittings on there if you do get everything and you have questions feel free to reach out um best place to reach me is facebook or instagram and i'll try to answer any questions you know if you get if you get all the parts and you're just stuck on the fitting part um or how to plumb it feel free to reach out i'll try to help uh, and then lastly, all in all, I think I had like $600 in the setup, 500 maybe. Um, I think it'll range for a lot of people. Uh, like I said, the JD square kit, the pump alone is like $1,300. You have $400 cylinder and the mounts like a hundred. I mean, so you're looking at $2,000 to convert it through JD squared. I, um, I would say between five and like $800 is what you would have in this setup, depending on where you're at and what stuff costs where you are. Um, the hoses and fittings is kind of a, you know, a lot of people have a connection and can get hydraulic hoses cramped, um, maybe even fittings. So that's kind of a, uh, you may already have a car battery laying around like I did to so say you don't have to buy a car battery. Um, I had about $500 in it, but like I said, I got some of the stuff um, I already had. So I think if you bought everything brand new, you may be at $750, $800, depending on where you're at. So to me, it's 100% well worth that. If you just buying a bender and you're looking at converting it to air over hydraulic, you know, that kit used to be like $200. I think it's probably closer to three now. Um, so for a few hundred more dollars, you get electric, you know, no compressor running. Um, it's way faster, way more efficient. Uh, yeah, I just think it's a lot better setup, and especially for guys like me or guys who are bending to weekly, 
or even if you just got a big project of your own, you know, saving a couple minutes here and there over the course of a 120 hour job, you know, that's, it's a lot of time that you save just by bending tube alone. So it's a good setup. Um, like I said, any questions that I didn't cover, I know I didn't go into like great detail on anything. Feel free to reach out. Um, hopefully this video helps. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Um, make sure, like I said, make sure you check out the Amazon store. All the parts that I use that you can get um, are on there. Anyway, I appreciate all you guys and thank you for watching the video.